Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. It gives me a great pride to be standing today in front of all of you in such a unique and special event that we've all, we've all been looking forward to. And I'm really pleased to present the next speaker, a dear friend and colleague, Dr. Fayyil Ajil, who has been always known for her professionalism, her dedication and sincerity in her work. Dr. Fay is a specialist family physician with a Mercy GP international degree. Uh, she, um, she's also a trainer in the Kuwait Family Medicine Program. She has a special interest in osteoporosis. She completed HOPE 1 and HOPE 4 program for management of osteoporosis. And she also completed the Obesity Academy for, uh, uh, for the treatment of obesity. And I'm not going to make you wait longer for her interesting speech. Dr. Fayl Ajil, the floor is yours. Um, it's a pleasure to stand here tonight uh, to speak about a very important uh, topic which is the approach to osteoporosis in primary care. Um, does this work? This is a, um, a quick overview with regards to today, today's talk. Some very important uh, definitions uh, that we should uh, know is the, what is osteoporosis. Osteoporosis uh, is, as you all know, is a chronic disease of the bone where the bone loses its microarchitecture, uh, leading to loss of bone, loss of the quality and the density of bone, leading to uh, its increase in fr uh, fragility and susceptibility to fragility fractures. It is chronic, unfortunately it is silent and painless unless complicated by fractures. N and not any fractures, fractures that occur after minimal trauma. Another clinical definition of osteoporosis, uh, according to the WHO, is a BMD score of less than or equal to negative 2.5 uh, at the lumbar or hip, hip regions by DEXA scan, or adulthood hip or vertebral fracture in the absence of major trauma. What is fragility fracture? Fragility fracture are fractures that occur during an activity that would not normally injure young healthy bone, for example, falling from standing height or less. They are pathological fractures that occur following no tra minimal trauma or no trauma at all. And the most common sites of fractures are the hip, the spine, the um, wrist, the humerus, the pelvis, and the ribs. So why is osteoporosis important? Why is it a hot topic right now? Because of its burden worldwide. What is the burden worldwide? According to the International Osteoporosis Foundation, the, uh, the, uh, the probability of, I mean, the, um, the population that would, um, that the popula the, there's a global incidence of around nine million uh, fractures that occur annually, and of this, one third of women and one fifth of uh, men aged 50 and above will suffer an osteoporotic fracture annually. This also uh, is, uh, affects uh, people who sustain a hip fracture, and of those who have survived a hip fracture, 50% of them will sustain another fracture in the upcoming year. And unfortunately, the mortality within the first year of life is around 25%. In addition to those who sustain a vertebral fracture, one third of them only come to clinical attention, which means that it is underdiagnosed and undertreated. So despite its severe impact, it remains underdiagnosed. However, it is a disease that can be easily prevented, diagnosed, and treated before any fracture occurs. Even after the first fracture occurs, there is effective treatment to decrease the risk of uh, ongoing uh, further fractures. And how is this done? By screening. We screen patients 
uh, to identify the individuals at our inc that are at increased risk of sustaining a low trauma fracture and who would benefit from the interventions to minimize that risk. So how is it done? It is done using a very simple tool, very reliable tool that is cost effective, available in our mobiles. And it is called the FRAX tool. FRAX uh, is an abbreviation for Fracture Risk Assessment Tool, which is developed by the WHO Collaborating Center at the University of Sheffield, England in 2008. So it is a group of questions, a questionnaire basically, that estimates the 10 year probability of a hip fracture or major osteoporotic fractures combined for an untreated woman or man using easily obtainable clinical risk factors for fracture with or without information on the BMD, which is the bone mineral density. It, provide, it also provides guidance for the BMD testing and treatment uh, in individuals. And it is only done at age 40 and above. <coughs> so this is uh, a slide that shows the, um, uh, the actual FRAX, FRAX risk assessment tool and the contents of that tool. Uh, we should bear in mind that FRAX is a country-specific tool, which means that of the countries that do have a FRAX, the FRAX is calibrated to the population of that country. We cannot use the FRAX of, for example, England in Kuwait and vice versa. This is because it is based on the epidemiology of the population of that place. It also takes into consideration the age of the, pa uh, the patient, the gender, other clinical factors like bone mineral density, past history of fragility fracture, uh, parental hip fracture, the use of corticosteroid treatment, if the patient is a current smoker or alcoholic consumption, uh, if the patient is diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis or risk equivalent diabetes type 2, and uh, other uh, secondary risk factors listed on the right, on your right side, like diabetes type 1, uh, premature menopause, bariatric surgeries, they all increase the risk of uh, bone fracture by affecting the bone's density. So, uh, in, um, in 2016, a FRAX specific for Kuwait was developed and released, and in this study, it was, uh, it was published um, to, uh, to uh, actually uh, compare the FRAX with the T-score based intervention thresholds for the treatment of osteoporosis. Uh, as we said earlier, it is easily obtainable by going online and Googling the FRAX tool. Uh, and then you, get, you go to the drop-down menu, you choose Kuwait, and here you go. This is the tool that you use in your clinics. To, uh, it would take only two minutes to actually um, screen patients for osteoporosis. And the uh, FRAX tool was incorporated in uh, Kuwait's osteoporosis guidelines that was developed by the Kuwait's Osteoporosis Society in 2018 and was updated in 2022. So please, if you can take a moment to scan these uh, codes so that you can have an access to the FRAX model and the um, uh, guidelines, which will be easier for you to follow. Do you need more time? <clears throat> okay. So, so what is the population that should be screened? First of all, the patients who are postmenopausal or a woman or a man age 50 and above should be screened. The first question that you should ask is whether th this patient has had a fragility fracture or no, whether this fracture was in this, uh, uh, fragility fracture was in the spine, hip, or two or more other uh, fractures occurring in long bones. If the answer was yes, you would 
classify this patient as a very high risk patient and you will refer this patient to anabolic treatment in secondary care. You would also order a DEXA scan as a baseline for monitoring treatment and management. If this patient does not have a history of fragility fracture, you will apply the FRAX to that patient. But prior to uh, going down the diagram, I would like to uh, explain a few thresholds in the slide. Uh, these are thresholds that were developed and calibrated to Kuwait's population that would guide us to the uh, diagnosis and management of patients. Uh, and these uh, thresholds are defined as follows. The lower assessment threshold is the 10-year probability of a major osteoporotic fracture for a woman with no risk factors. So if the patient's frax is below that threshold, they are on the safe side. They do not have as osteoporosis, but they need follow-up. If uh, and the intervention threshold is defined as a 10-year probability of a major osteoporotic fracture for a woman with a prior fracture. In addition to the upper assessment threshold, which is 20% addition of the risk on the intervention threshold. And any patient above that upper assessment threshold is a candidate for treatment. So moving back to the um, diagram, if you apply the FRAX and the patient's fra FRAX is below the lower assessment threshold, these patients are classified as having low risk and uh, you will reassure this patient, uh, give them lifestyle advice uh, and, to, and maintain their vitamin D and calcium at an acceptable level. And then you will repeat the FRAX in five years unless the patient's clinical condition changes. If the patient's FRAX was above the upper assessment threshold, which is in the red area, you will directly refer this patient to secondary care for anabolic treatment. And of course, you will order a DEXA scan uh, for, a baseline, for baseline to monitor the patient's response to treatment. However, if the patient is between these thresholds, between the lower assessment threshold and upper assessment threshold, you will order the DEXA scan. And here comes the role of the DEXA scan to determine whether the patient is osteoporotic or not. After sending the patient uh, to do a DEXA scan and the patient comes back to you, you will reassess the risk of that patient using FRAX and interpreting the DEXA result in the FRAX. So after reassessing the, uh, the, the, the probability, if the patient's FRAX is above upper assessment threshold, you will refer the patient to anabolic treatment because they are classified now as very high risk. If the patient's uh, FRAX is below the interventional threshold, you will reassure the patient, give lifestyle um, advice, and repeat the DEXA scan after three years. If, however, the patient's in, uh, FRAX is between the interventional threshold and upper assessment threshold, the patient is a candidate for anti-resorptive treatment, which is available in, uh, in primary care. I hope this is clear. We will, do, we will go over a few cases just to clarify the, uh, the FRAX. Okay, so this is the chart that you should have um, um, got access to when you, um, fra when you scanned the code. And it shows a clearer um, picture of the assessment thresholds. If the patient's FRAX was between lower and upper assessment threshold, they are candidates for DEXA scan, which will determine the, um, the treatment plan. Okay. Uh, we have to put into consideration after applying the FRAX to the patient uh, uh, to the FRAX score enhancers, which are correcting factors that, would, uh, that are used to, as, to check if the, the, uh, there is an addit additive risk to the patient according to the risk factors. For example, if the patient is type 2 diabetic patient, you will take um, a check on the question with, uh, that is asking about the rheumatoid arthritis because diabetes is equivalent to rheumatoid arthritis 
uh, for the risk. If the patient is on uh, glucocorticoids um, and th uh, there is a correcting factor for the dose of that uh, glucocorticoid given, uh, if the patient has sustained a fracture within the past two years, uh, the, uh, there is also a correcting uh, factor for that uh, fracture according to the patient's age and location. So, for the discordance, and there is another uh, uh, enhancer, which is the lumbar spine discordance, which I will explain in this slide. There, sometimes there will be a discordance of the T-score of the patient's lumbar spine and, uh, um, and the uh, hip. So what would you do is that you would check for the uh, discordance. And according to that discordance, you will add the risk. For example, if the T-score at the femur neck in the DEXA scan is negative 0.8 and the score at the spine is negative 2.8, there is a two standard deviation difference between the two values. You, you have to add a 10% uh, risk for each standard deviation. So, for example, if you frax the patient and the frax was 9%, and there was a discordance, there was a two standard deviation discordance between the lumbar and femur, you will add 20% to that frax by multiplying the frax by 1.2. So basically you're adding 20% of the frax to the risk. Let's go over a few examples. Um, this patient is a 60, 68 years old female lady known case of diabetes type 2, which is a risk factor, and the patient has no family history or personal history of uh, fractures. Uh, the height and weight is given, the examination is unremarkable, the laboratory investigations are all normal aside from a deficiency in vitamin D. So what would you do? You will, uh, you will calculate the FRAX. The FRAX in this case was 6.5. So when you plot this number according to age on the chart, the patient's frax will be between the thresholds, the lower assessment threshold and the upper assessment threshold, which means this patient is in the orange zone. They are a candidate for the ADEXA scan. So you will send the patient to do ADEXA scan, and when they come back to you, you have to check these values. Uh, the T-score at the femoral neck and the T-score at the lumbar spine. As you can see, there is no discordance between the uh, femoral neck and lumbar spine, which means that the, the, the value of the T-score in the lumbar spine is better than the value of the femoral neck. So after calculating the FRAX and adding the negative 3.1 uh, for the last question as a T-score, you will get the result of 13%. And then when you plot this 13% on the chart, the, 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 the FRAX, uh, the probability will change dramatically. The patient will be, uh, the, the FRAX will be above the upper assessment threshold and the patient is now uh, osteoporotic uh, at a very high risk of osteoporosis and they are candidates for anabolic treatment. So you can see that uh, FRAX is helpful to guide us for the management and the choice of treatment given. And this also um, is evidence that risk factors are very important um, to guide us in the management. Another example is a case uh, of a 61 years old Kuwaiti lady. Uh, she is a known case of prediabetes, hypertension, and dyslipidemic with a history of a right proximal forearm fracture that occurred seven month, around seven months ago. The height and weight is given, her labs are normal, she is not deficient in vitamin D, and she brought to you her uh, DEXA results. As you can see, uh, the T-score of the left, uh, the, left femur neck is negative 1.3, so you always choose the lowest of the two hips, and the, dexa, uh, and the result of the T-score for the lumbar spine is negative 2. There is no discordance um, of more than one, st uh, one standard deviation or more. And then when you calculate the FRAX, 
the, the preliminary facts is 6.3, but when you add the risk of the, femur, the, the proximal forearm fra uh, fracture, the risk will increase by 1%. And this, uh, when you plot it on the chart, the patient becomes, uh, the, her frax is above the intervention threshold and she is a candidate for anti-resorptive treatment. So again, the frax is important to identify the risk factors in addition to the correcting factors. In addition to the frax, uh, it is very important to um, check the patient's vertebral fracture assessment. This is done uh, either on the, at the same setting of the DEXA scan, where the patient is asked to lie on their lateral side, and an image of the uh, lateral vertebral spine is taken, or by a simple uh, lumbar spine film. It is indicated in all women page, uh, aged 70 and above, and men 80 and above. In addition to women and men aged 50 and above who sustained a low trauma fracture, who come to you and through history, the, you, uh, they tell you that they have lost height. They're, they're, they're shortening their dresses, their, um, their dresses, their clothes, and or sometimes they come with a historical height loss when you check their records in the system. Or if the patient is, a re ha is on uh, long-term uh, glucocorticoid treatment. So why is it important? Because again, uh, fractures are silent, vertebral fractures are silent, and they are consistent with the diagnosis of osteoporosis, even if it's not supported by the BMD. Uh, it detects silent vertebral fractures and past history of ver fragility fracture. So what do we look at? Is we look at the shapes of the vertebra, whether they are crushed, biconcave, and wedged. So this is a report of the VFA done uh, at the same setting of the DEXA scan. As, and as you can see, the uh, change of the shapes of the vertebra, the biconcavity and the wedge shapes in L2 and L4. So we will move on to treatment. Uh, but before we initiate any treatment, the patient has to be evaluated. Uh, and assessed for hypocalcemia, uh, uh, chronic kidney disease, vitamin D deficiency, and dental procedures. All of these should be corrected and maintained at a good level prior to initiating treatment. So, uh, with regards to treatment, uh, the high-risk patients and the very high-risk patients uh, should receive non-pharmacological treatment and pharmacological treatment. Non-pharmacological treatment is basically advice with regards to smoking and alcohol cessation and limitation of caffeine, weight-bearing exercise, and measures to reduce the risk of falling, including physical therapy. So the, this is just a brochure with, that we um, distribute in the osteoporosis clinics, uh, which gives a summary of the advice. Uh, with regards to diet, exercise, and habits, and also um, measures to reduce uh, falling at home, including the home safety, uh, um, eye examination, regular eye examination, review of medications. Moving on to the pharmacological treatment. Calcium is very important for the health of bones. We usually uh, advise the patients to have their uh, calcium intake in sufficiency from their diet. If that was not possible, we, uh, we prescribe supplements, including calcium carbonate, citrate, and caltrate, which are all, most of them are available. Another important uh, point is vitamin D, which is important to have it at a sufficient level prior to a starting treatment, uh, either from the, uh, from the sun, from the um, diet, and if it's still deficient, we start the patients on main uh, correcting uh, dosages and maintenance. Here is um, a meta-analysis. Uh, of, pay, of the hip fractures and non-vertebral fractures. And as you can see, 
by maintaining an, uh, an, a daily intake of 800 international units of uh, vitamin D, the relative risk of fracture decreases. Moving on to anti-resorptive agents uh, that are given to patients with high risk of osteoporosis, the available agents are, are the bisphosphonates, alendronate, which is an oral bisphosphonate, zolendronate, IV intravenous uh, bisphosphonate, and denosumab, which is a monoclonal antibody. They are all available in the primary health care, and they are given uh, according to patient's uh, preference, according to patient's uh, if there are any side effects of specific medications, and the patients are follow, followed up according to the medication. And uh, if there is a progression of the bone loss or fracture, the patient is shifted to anabolic treatment. This is a, just a summary of the bisphosphonates. Um, the choice of bisphosphonate also is important. Some patients cannot tolerate the oral bisphosphonate they can be shifted to intravenous bisphosphonates, which is an IV infusion that is given yearly for three years and then followed up. Moving on to adenosumab, which is a fully human monoclonal antibody that inhibits uh, the action of osteoclasts. Uh, it uh, is a promising medication that in increases uh, bone mineral density in the hip and the spine and decreases fracture uh, probability in, the, in, the, in these regions. It is given as a subcutaneous injection, six monthly, for, uh, up to, from five to up to 12 years, and, uh, and there is no drug holiday. Dr. Rafay, Hello. we have two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So uh, this is just um, a, a figure taken from the Freedom study, which shows the effectiveness of denosumab on min bone mineral density at specific skeletal sites. Uh, and it decreases the risk of fracture at 36 months and up to 10 years. So moving on to the very high risk patients who are referred for anabolic treatment, two medications are available uh, for treatment. And these are the patients who we refer to, as we discussed earlier. The anabolic agents include teriparatide, which is a parathyroid hormone analog, and the romosuzumab, which is, again, a monoclonal antibody, uh, which has a dual effect. It increases bone uh, formation and decreases bone resorption. Um, the, uh, the teriparatide is a medication given for up to two years. It is given daily, subcutaneously, and then this sh should be followed by anti-resorptive agents. The, rumos the rumosuzumab is a medication given uh, by two injections monthly for one year, and then this should be followed by anti-resorptive agents. So basically, uh, the treatment for osteoporosis is ongoing like any other chronic disease. The patient should be followed up and assessed uh, or, and like every six monthly and then annually and every two years to repeat the DEXA scan. These are uh, studies, um, diagrams from the FRAME study that shows the effect of remosozumab on bone mineral density at 12 months and then 24 months when it was followed by uh, anti-resortive agents. So uh, to uh, uh, to follow up the patient, the patient's DEXA scan should be repeated after two years uh, at, at, on the same machine and if with the same technician if possible. Uh, the, we should monitor the changes in the lumbar spine and the total hip BMD and not the T-scores. The treatment, uh, we should assess the treatment and the uh, success of treatment by checking the patient's BMD, if whether it's stable or increasing, and if there is absence of fragility fractures. Treatment failure is determined uh, if there is decline in BMD or if uh, uh, there is an occurrence of a fragility fracture. We should also rule out non-adherence to treatment uh, any sc uh, scan issues or secondary causes of osteoporosis. So in summary, uh, osteoporosis is a common silent disease uh, associated with significant mortality and morbidity. Screening is very crucial and it is readily available. 
uh, treatment is also available in primary care and in secondary care. Thank you.